Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Distance Learning Program. It's great to be with you again. I miss everybody, and I hope that this public health crisis that we've been experiencing will finally come to an end and we'll be able to get back together soon. It sure would be nice to be able to have regular classes again. What we're going to do today is focus on Lesson 6B, Adverb Clauses. And this is from the Ventures 3 book. So if you could turn to page 72, we're going to be studying adverb clauses. So part one says grammar focus, clauses with when. Now remember, clauses are not able to stand as a sentence alone, but they usually have a subject and a verb. So a clause has a subject and a verb, but it can't be uh, a complete sentence. So if you'll take a look, what maybe if you look at this orange box right here, it says a clause is a group of words that has a subject and a verb. The word when often joins two clauses in which the activities occur at the same time. Use when plus present tense verbs to talk about habits. Now, the first example says, when I have a lot to do, I make a to-do list. So the when clause comes at the beginning of the sentence. I is the subject and have is the main verb. And in the second clause, it says make is the verb. So I is the subject of the second clause, make is the verb. Next. It says, when she feels tired, she takes a break. So the when clause is when she feels tired, and the second clause is she takes a break. Notice that in both of these examples, the activities happen at the same time. They occur at the same time. Now the next two examples will show you that you can put the when clause at the end of a sentence. So, number three says, I make a to-do list when I have a lot to do. And four says, she takes a break when she feels tired. So, in the first two examples, the when clause comes at the beginning of the sentence. And in the second, I mean, in the second set of examples, the number three and number four, the when clause comes at the end of the sentence. And notice that when it comes at the beginning of the sentence, you put a comma after the when clause. So if you'll take a look over here at the blue box that says useful language, I'm going to read what it says in the blue box. It says, use a comma when the when clause is at the beginning of the sentence. That's in the first two examples. And it says, when you are speaking or reading out loud, Pause after the comma. Pause just means to take a, a little moment and uh, just don't say anything. Then let's go to part two where it says practice. It says combine the sentences and use when. Circle the adverb clause. And remember the adverb clause is the when clause. So number one says... You have many things to do. Make a to-do list. So we're going to use the when clause at the beginning of the sentence. And it says, when you have many things to do, and then there's a comma, it says, make a to-do list. And both of these tasks happen at the same time. These things happen at the same time. So number two, it says you have a deadline and write it on your calendar. So let's use have a deadline in the when clause. So you would say, when you have a deadline, comma, write it on your calendar. And you would circle when you have a deadline because that's the when clause. That's the adverb clause. 
Number three, it says don't let people interrupt you. You need to concentrate. So what I would do is I would put you need to concentrate in the win clause because you're not going to want people to interrupt you when you need to concentrate. So the sentence I would make is don't let people interrupt you when you need to concentrate. Number four, you want to focus on a task. Turn off the television. So I would put focus on the task in the when clause. So it says here, when you want to focus on a task, comma, turn off the television. So the adverb clause that you would circle is when you want to focus on a task. Remember, each time you want to circle the adverb clause, and that's the when clause. Number five, you feel tired. Take a break. So I would say, when you feel tired, comma, take a break. Number six, give yourself a reward. You finish something difficult. Now, the when, the when clause comes at the end of the sentence, so we would say, give yourself a reward when you finish something difficult. Number seven, don't procrastinate, you have a deadline. So what would go in the when clause? Probably when you have a deadline. So I would say, don't procrastinate when you have a deadline and circle when you have a deadline. Number eight, you are tired. Don't do difficult tasks. So what would go in the win clause? Probably you are tired. So the answer would be when you are tired, don't do difficult tasks. And number nine, prioritize tasks. You have many things to do. I would put, you have many things to do in the when clause. And therefore, the answer would be prioritize tasks when you have many things to do. Now let's turn to page 71. Part B says, talk with a partner. Make sentences with when. And it says, answers will vary. So you can probably make many different answers instead of the ones that are written in the book. But part A says, when Mr. Jackson has a deadline, he doesn't answer the phone. Ms. Clark answers every call when she has a deadline. Now the verbs that they're wanting to use are expect, hope, intend, need, plan, and want. So you could use any of these verbs in the sentences that follow. Number one says, doesn't answer the phone for Mr. Jackson. So you could say, when Mr. Jackson has a deadline, he doesn't answer the phone. And then for Ms. Clark, it says, answers every call. So you could say, when Ms. Clark has a deadline, she answers every call. Or you could say, Ms. Clark answers every call when she has a deadline. Look at number two. Number two says, closes his office door for Mr. Jackson. So 
So you could say when Mr. Jackson has a deadline, he closes his office door. And then for Ms. Clark, it says, allows people to interrupt. So you could answer that question by saying, Ms. Clark allows people to interrupt when she has a deadline. Number three, it says works on one task at a time for Mr. Jackson. So the answer would be, when Mr. Jackson has a deadline, he works on one task at a time. And for Ms. Clark, it says, works on several things at once. So the answer for that would be, Ms. Clark works on several things at once when she has a deadline. If you notice, it appears that Mr. Jackson is much more organized than Ms. Clark. So these are probably things that an organized person does on the left, and these are things that a disorganized person or a person who does not manage their time very wisely, these are the things they do on the right. So number four, it says begins work immediately. So the answer for that would be, when Mr. Jackson has a deadline, he begins work immediately. What does Ms. Clark do? Ms. Clark procrastinates when she has a deadline. Number five, it says, does difficult tasks first? So the answer for that would be, when Mr. Jackson has a deadline, he does difficult tasks first. And for Ms. Clark, I would say, Ms. Clark saves difficult tasks for last when she has a deadline. Number six, it says, doesn't check email. So the answer for that would be, when Mr. Clark has a deadline, he doesn't check email. For number six, for Ms. Clark, it says, checks email frequently. So the answer would be, Ms. Clark checks email email frequently when she has a deadline. And for number seven, for Mr. Jackson, it says, makes no personal phone calls. So the answer would be, when Mr. Jackson has a deadline, he makes no personal phone calls. And for Ms. Clark, it says, makes many personal phone calls. So the answer would be, Ms. Clark makes many personal phone calls when she has a deadline. Now, let's move to part three, where it says communicate. It says work in a small group, interview your classmates, complete the chart. Now I know it's difficult to work in a small group right now, but maybe you can uh, do this with one of your family members. It says, A, what do you do when you have a deadline? B says, I usually procrastinate. C says, I start working right away. So, think about how you would answer these questions that follow. It says, what do you do when you have many things to do? What do you do when you have many things to do? What do you do when you need to finish a difficult task? What do you do when you need to finish a difficult task? And finally, what do you do when you have trouble concentrating? 
Concentrating means to focus on something and pay very close attention. All right, so I'll be right with you. All right, I had to take a pause to open my tablet and go to News For You. For this week, I'd like to read the article, Factory Workers Live Together for 28 Days to, fight, to Help Fight Virus. So I'm going to email a copy of the article to everyone so that you'll have it to read. But if you can open your emails and get the copy of the article, I'm going to read it for you and you can read along with me. On March 23rd, 43 workers at a factory in Pennsylvania signed in for the longest shift of their lives. The workers did not leave the Brascom factory in Marcus Hook for 28 days. They worked and slept in one place. They traded 12 hour shifts all day and all night. Together, the workers made tens of millions of pounds of polypropylene. That is a plastic mixture. It is used in making the special fabric for medical masks and gowns. Those things are very important for medical workers. They need the masks and gowns to protect themselves while they fight the new coronavirus. Workers at Brascom's West Virginia factory also worked a 28-day shift. The workers are just one example of the ways Americans have used their skills to fight the new coronavirus. And skills are abilities to do things that come from training, experience, or practice. We were happy just, we were just happy to be able to help, said Joe Boyce. He has worked at Brascom's Pennsylvania factory for 27 years. No one made them do it. The men raised their hands to help out. CEO, that means Chief Executive Officer, Mark Nikolic, said they were paid for all 24 hours each day. A team live-in. They called it a live-in. They brought toothbrushes and shaving kits. They put beds in offices. They turned an office kitchen into a dining hall. That helped them avoid catching the virus outside of work. No other people were allowed inside. Some brought in TVs, games, and video games. They also stayed active at the online at the on uh, at the on-site gym. That gym has never been used so much before, boy said. He did a lot of cooking each night. They took turns cleaning. The men missed their families, Boyce said. One man missed the birth of his first grandchild. On day 14, the families planned a drive-by visit. Police led their cars in a parade past the factory. Family members waved signs, and cheered from their windows. Cheered means express support and help someone feel happier. It was enough to give a boost to all the guys, Boyce said. And boost means help or encouragement. Then on day, eight, then on day 28, it was time to leave. All 43 men walked out as a team. All right, that completes the reading of the video. 
And in the next video, I'll ask you some questions about it and see if you can understand the answers. Have a great day.